Hello, in this video I'm going to explain how to solve metric to metric and metric to non-metric conversion problems. Uh, first off, the content and language objectives. Content objective is I can convert between different metric and non-metric units. A language objective is I can write about real-life examples where converting units is important. Uh, so first off, metric and non-metric units. Metric units or standard international units uh, are used throughout most of the world. They involve measurements of meters, grams, liters, uh, degrees, Kelvin. Uh, those are just a few examples. Uh, English units or non-metric units uh, include units such as miles, feet, uh, inches, pounds, ounces. Uh, and so we're going to talk about how you can move from one unit to another unit, uh, both metric to metric and metric to English units labeled here or non-metric units. Uh, so first of all, uh, metric units, where are they used in the world? The answer is most of the world, all the countries. Uh, outside those listed in red, uh, use primarily metric units. Uh, the benefit to metric units is they are very easy to convert between. Uh, the rest of the world uses them, uh, and it, all it involves is moving a decimal place. So it's very easy uh, to do these conversions. <clears throat> Non-metric units, the problem is there aren't uh, a whole lot of sensible conversion factors. Uh, and so there are 5,280 feet in a mile, for instance. Uh, two cups and a pint, two pints and a quart, four quarts and a gallon. And so they can be difficult to remember the units and how to move from one to another. Uh, so the metric system, like I said, uh, the wonderful thing is that they use prefixes. Uh, and these prefixes, they involve how many places you're going to move a decimal. So if, if you've ever heard of a kilometer or a kilometer, kilo means thousand uh, meters. A centimeter, centi means one one hundredth. Uh, and so they're very easy to use between... Uh, to convert between. Uh, just an example problem for metric to metric conversion factors, uh, you could convert 739,000 millimeters to kilometers. Uh, how would you do that? Uh, you could look at the chart that's found to the right uh, or use your prior knowledge and know that there are 1,000 millimeters in a meter and there are 1,000 uh, meters in a kilometer. And so if you were to convert between units, the method that I like to use uh, is this train tracks method uh, where you set up conversion factors uh, within these different tracks. Uh, you're always going to start on the left-hand side with your uh, beginning values. And so you have 739,000 uh, millimeters. Uh, the conversion factors, I'm just going to load them in there. So there's one meter uh, per 1,000 millimeters, uh, one kilometer per 1,000 meters. Uh, what you're going to try to do is get these units to cancel out. And so you're going to try to have one a uh, unit that is on the numerator and one that's on the denominator of each of these fractions uh, that cancel out. And so the end result is that you no longer have any units other than the ones that you seek. Uh, and so you see on the top here, we're left with kilometers, uh, but we've canceled out the other units. Uh, then what you would do uh, is you would take your 739,000 uh, divided by 1,000 divided by 1,000, and you'd come up with 0 0.739 kilometers. Uh, so again, the train tracks method of converting units is really handy to keep track of units and to put all your information in one place. Uh, just another way to look at this, uh, again, there are 1,000 millimeters in a meter. There are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. And so all you do to come up with your answer is you just move your decimal uh, six places to the left uh, to come up with your answer. So that's the benefit of the metric system. Uh, very easy to convert units. Uh, there are factors of 10 uh, as conversion factors. Uh, Non-metric units, on the other hand, uh, there are lots of, of different non-metric units uh, that are used for mass, for volume, uh, for, uh, for distance. And so you could memorize those conversion factors or you can just look up what the conversion factors are. Uh, but those are listed right here. And if you want to solve a metric to non-metric conversion problem, such as converting 2.8 miles to meters, uh, you need to know the conversion factors that get you from the beginning uh, to the end. Uh, you, again, are always going to start in the top left corner with the units that you begin with, uh, 2.8 miles. And then what you need to use are the conversion factors that are found in the bottom left of the screen uh, to get you from miles to meters. And so there are 5,280 feet in one mile. Uh, what you're going to notice, again, is that I want miles to be on the numerator and denominator, so they cancel each other out. Uh, there is one yard uh, in three feet. There are three feet in one yard. 
I again, which you'll notice is feet in the numerator and denominator here are going to cancel each other out. Uh, and then uh, one meter is 1.094 yards. Uh, looking at these units, you see miles in red cancel out, feet in teal cancel out, in purple yards cancel each other out. So the only unit that we're left in at the end uh, is going to be meters. And how do you go through and solve this problem? Uh, you're going to take all the values on the numerator and multiply them out. Uh, you're going to take all the values in the denominator, multiply them out, and take the numerator's product divided by the denominator to come up with 4,504 meters. Uh, while there's a lot of value in knowing how to convert between one unit and another, a great way to double check your answer or to just do so once you've figured out how to convert between units is to go to a Google search and type convert colon 17 meters per second to miles per hour, hit return, and Google will solve these problems for you. Uh, that's the end of this video, uh, explaining how to convert between metric and metric units or metric and non-metric units. Uh, if you have any questions, you're always welcome to stop by during homework help hours or period 1A. Uh, thank you very much and have a great day.